Greetings all and welcome to my latest blog. It has been a while since I've recorded one um, since I tested positive for COVID-19. Um, I thought I would share my, my journey with you and celebrate that I've gone through my 14 days of isolation. Um, in a few minutes, I'll share what I went through, um, but I also just needed to record this, this blog because I see that there are a number of newspaper articles that have been written, um, although I haven't done any interviews, but also mainly to share my experience and with the hope that if you or a friend or a loved one have tested positive, um, these tips might help you in your journey um, and just give you that positive mental outlook that you need during this, this crazy crisis. This morning when I <clears throat> woke up um, and I was thinking about, you know, what I was going to write, uh, what I was going to uh, say to you in this, in this vlog, uh, I was reminded, <coughs> excuse me, I was reminded of a post that uh, Dr. T, Dr. Tlaleng Mofa King put on, on her Twitter timeline. Uh, and the post, I think it was done a few weeks ago, and it went something along the lines of, how has love shown up for you? And this morning I was reminded of the so many ways <clears throat> in which love has shown up for, for myself and my partner during this crazy, crazy time and during this pandemic. <clears throat> from the messages, from the calls, from the texts, from the deliveries, from the prayers. Uh, guys, I know you've been praying. And they have all been received, and they've been received with a huge, huge amount of gratitude, and I thank you. So, <clears throat> my COVID-19 journey. Uh, before the South African lockdown was announced, uh, I'd already moved out of my office, moved the, everything into my living room, um, purely because there were people in the building that had traveled, and I just didn't want to take any precautions. And... You know, I became that auntie that sanitized everything from my grocery bags, from my shoes, from soaking my clothing after coming out, everything that you could possibly think of. In the beginning, I even wore gloves. Then when I was I discovered that, that actually the gloves can spread a lot more, um, I stopped wearing them, always wore my mask, and yet still I contracted the, the, the disease. And so <clears throat> a week before we were tested, uh, South Africa had a, 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 a cold front. And unfortunately, during that time, we had 48 hours of no electricity because there was a power failure in the area. And I think that is where my immune system could have been compromised and we got ill. Um, I just got a very, very chesty cough and I wasn't concerned because the cough that is that is online that is associated with COVID is said to be a dry cough. Um, we had 24 hours of flu-like symptoms, which are, of course medicated with med lemon and equivalent of and so forth, panado, um, sachets, um, and then we were fine. My partner just had a hunch, and went to a GP. Uh, GP took the temperature, saw that there was slight inflammation in my partner's uh, throat but said to us that, no, we don't need to go get tested. Fortunately for us, my partner needed other, um, other tests for, for dietary requirements, and so um, we were given the necessary forms, and we went to our closest lab. And on arrival, we saw downstairs that people were testing for COVID, and we thought, well, while we're there, might as well. And so my partner got tested. Following day, the day, the results came back, and they were positive. Uh, I automatically, next day, because I was instructed, went in, following day, tested, and we put ourselves into isolation and started our routine, which I'll get into in, in a few minutes. Um, and then two days later, my results came back, and, and, and they were positive. And we immediately contacted my body corporate just to inform them, um, also so that we could allow deliveries to come to our door. 
uh, I told my neighbor, although I hadn't had any in interaction with him, but just to let him know, because I would have liked to know. And then I also informed people that, that and colleagues that, that I saw um, as far back as two weeks, although there was social distancing, but just in case. Um, and then we embarked on one of the most scariest journeys of my entire life. Uh, from an emotional point of view, I experienced an avalanche of emotions from being frustrated, being angry, um, being incredibly, incredibly, incredibly scared, uh, then into commando mode of, okay, well, if I don't get through this, are my affairs in order, checking my will, my policies, and so forth, and then crying a lot. And, and, I'm, and I'm glad I went through all of those processes. And this is some, a choice that I've made a couple of years ago um, as part of my, my, my self-love is that whatever emotions I feel and what my body goes through, I need to process them. And so although we were together, we both were going through different emotions at times and we could lift each other up and, 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 and vice versa. And then, and then you get into mode where you... Give gratitude. Give gratitude that, you know, I'm, yes, I'm test tested positive for this unknown scary illness, but I still speak and live from a place of privilege. Uh, by the grace of God, you know, COVID-19 has really been bad for businesses all around the world. Um, and as an entrepreneur, as a freelancer and an activist, there's really, really been very limited funds. And by the grace of God, you know, we were able to, to support ourselves during this time because the medication and vitamins are not very cheap. And so our routine included waking up in the morning, taking our vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams, the effervescent, then taking LinkedIn um, effervescent, um, the vitamin C, obviously, for the vitamin C, we needed zinc, and we couldn't get it from any of the pharmacies or local stores, but you could find it in the other, the other supplements. Um, vitamin D, we couldn't get a hold of, so we substituted that with sitting in the sun for, for an hour, and I'm fortunate that my apartment's very, very well lit. Um, so that is where we got our vitamin D from. And then we would steam and basically taking a bowl, fill it with boiling water, a dollop of Vicks and some eucalyptus oil and a heavy uh, blanket over our head and put our heads over the bowl and steam for 15 to 20 minutes. Then take a shower, very, very warm shower. After that, um, gargle, we gargle three to five times a day with warm salt water, dress warmly, have a warm breakfast, uh, and then process whatever we needed to go through. Um, we constantly, because one of the things with, with, with that I found with COVID was that I lost my taste buds, so I didn't want to eat. So you're constantly putting on our timer on our phone to remind us when it's time to eat and always eating warm foods. Uh, as, we, as I said, we couldn't find zinc, so we tried to find foods that, that, that contain zinc. Beans was one of them. And of course, beans and sampo are very easy to prepare, so you don't have to be slaving in the kitchen the whole time, and, and eggs. Um, and then, then rest, you know. Uh, in, in the evening, what I would do is also, and, and all of these, these different tips came from doctors who, who have helped patients get through COVID-19. And sleeping at night was never very easy because one of the most concerning symptoms for me was my tight chest, my loss of my shortness of breath and, and a heavy, heavy chesty cough. Um, so I would sleep, um, I would demonstrate with my phone. So this would be my pillow. I would literally sleep with my chest and tummy on top of my pillow, put a hot water bottle underneath to try and just warm the chest area. And of course, that's not a comfortable position. So there was, and between that, between waking up and checking on my partner and vice versa of them doing that for me, um, coughing, not breathing, sleep. There was not a, much, a lot of sleep that happened at night. So when we could fall asleep on the couch, either watching something funny or something uplifting or reading, that's what we would do. Um, 
And then, you know, one of the other things is that you're supposed to try and keep as mobile as possible. So the first week was very difficult for me to do moderate exercise. Um, but I would either walk around the apartment, up and down the stairs, which was very, very difficult because of the shortness of breath. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but by the second week, I was able to get through 30 minutes of, of moderate exercise. Uh, there's also a lot of breathing exercises that we did. One very easy one is just blowing up a balloon um, three to five times a day. Um, another one is is taking like either a jug or something and putting a straw in with water and just blowing into that straw. Um, so yeah, so these these were our different routines that we would did on a on a on a, on a daily basis, and. Um, after the fifth or sixth day, I, I managed to, to pull up the courage and tell other friends and family before I went online and, and, and told people about my symptoms. Um, and then by day 10, I realized, okay, we're going to get through it. My partner's symptoms had almost, um, had almost gone. Um, I still struggled with, with the shortness of breath and with coughing, but it was less coughing. Um, and now we, we're, we're now on day 17, um, feeling strong, feeling healthier. I'm still going to remain in isolation, uh, still having deliveries brought to us, uh, have no intention of mingling or getting out there. Um, so yeah, so we're here. Uh, one thing I will say was that those first few days, of going through those different symptoms, um, I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. So if you're feeling ill, uh, another thing which I didn't mention was that from, from day one when, when, when the lockdown was announced, we got a thermometer in the house and we would check our temperatures morning and evening and our temperatures were never, ever high. So if it wasn't for a gut feeling of actually just going for that test. We possibly would have only tested when it maybe would have been too late. So please be safe. Um, if you need any assistance, um, or just not assistance, I'm not a medical doctor, but um, just send me a message in my DM. Uh, obviously I'm not following so quickly because, um, or responding so quickly because I'm still still in recovery. But we've made it through the worst. What's to come over the next couple of weeks, months, years, we don't know. But um, I have to give thanks once again to the people that have been there, for the people that have been saying those prayers and silent prayers, and for my faith. So stay blessed, stay safe, and thanks for watching.